Good morning, ladies and gents. It is a rainy but crappy Wednesday morning, but it's another day above ground, so I can't complain. Today I'm working on an, um, oh wow, I was going to say an American Ruger. A Ruger American. It's the 940 full size. I got it right here with TLR1. And uh, I just kind of want to give you guys a, a tip as well, because uh, I ended up ordering all of the keys for the TLR1 series flashlights. And the reason why I'm doing that is if you did, if you did, if you did a normal Glock key, this will sit forward. So uh, I put it on, I think it's a SIG 1913 rail, and it's sitting just perfect. So I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna build a holster just for that. On top of the ovens being on and the foam warming up, I have brand new foam in the ovens now. If you do a lot of foam pressing and you wear out that foam, brand new foam is just, it's like getting new socks, if you know what I mean. All right, but anyways, uh, this is going, it's, it's inside the waistband right-handed, so really no bells and whistles other than a claw, and FDE carbon fiber. So here we have the FDE carbon, and uh, we're going to go ahead and knock this out. And of course, we're using our light widgets that are made in-house now. And material is showing up. I've already depleted all the material that I've had in stock. So I had, I don't know, like 10 orders go out. I have another like 20, 25 orders to go with those. Real easy to make. Well, not easy, time consuming. But um, once the rest of the material comes in, which it says Friday, then uh, I'll be doing a lot more this weekend. So let's get this going. Ooh, I just love it. And first things first, uh, obviously we got the light attached. Um, and like I said earlier, it is a good idea to get the keys for all the lights that you carry. That way you don't have to, you know, set them up to be just crappy. So that's what I did. And it, like I said, it, it works great. It took me a little bit to figure out which one works well. And I'm going to write it on the order form that that is the key that I used. Because like I said, it was way too far out and it was not pleasant at all. Uh, anyways, I'm going to start with the suppressor right sights. This uh, particular order says it's not modified, so uh, generally means that it doesn't have it, but with the process I use, adding this makes my life a lot easier. So if you're a ma manufacturer, just adding it will make your life easier. So I'll just go ahead and do that. Oh, I love this new mount. All right, and I'm gonna start. This is just a um, dowel, eighth inch, I believe. Oh, quarter inch. All right. This isn't flat, so this is going to rock. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to flatten this out in the belt sander. Much better. All right, and I used a medium-sized tape. I used to use the thicker tape, but I found that just installing it, the medium size just worked much better. I overlap it slightly, so when we peel it off, it comes off easier. There's number three. This fourth one is gonna be normal. And the last one, I'm gonna stretch over, really add tension in that so it doesn't move. Another thing that you can do to stop sight channels from moving is this. I got another pro tip for you guys. What do you do when you have a, this is a Browning High Power, a curved slide and you need to block the channel. Now, if you do this, this has a possibility of rotating. What do you do? How do you put it on? I'm gonna show you what I do. Hold it in place as good as you can. Better on the bench. <laughs> All right, and then I'm just going to take my flush cutters. And there we go, a permanently mounted <laughs> Sight channel. Put it against something because it's pretty good. Well, there's your tech tip. 
No, that ain't moving. And from here, I'm gonna go ahead and lay that down. We know that we're gonna have to block all this, which that is perfect just the way it is. That's gonna sit right there. And then the same thing on the other side. So again, we're gonna use the medium sized tape and we're not gonna go over this top edge right here. We're gonna line it up with it because if you go over it, it's gonna rock. And I found that out the hard way. Right, perfect. And this is, um, we're gonna have to block right there, which means we're gonna stick this here, or stick one of these, because it is light bearing, I mean, uh, inside the waistband. So uh, we just need a small channel that goes just outside that. We don't have to extend it all the way out. So we'll, we'll make that work. All right, let's get our sight channels on. Oh, yeah. That is a beautiful thing. Or not sight channels, light widgets. Go ahead and add this, and we're gonna block it all the way to that bolt. And then make sure we are squared along everywhere else. to the other side. I'm gonna add this here because it's starting to flop. There we go. I've noticed that we have to wipe our flashlights with um, alcohol to get tape to stick sometimes now. Oh. Right, so this particular setup light widget is rotating. That'll stop it from rotating right there. Just add that. And let's see what this does. and wrap it underneath. There's one. And two. Ahead and lift these to like a reposition. There we go. Perfect. 
All right, and uh, we're going to need blocking up here as well. All right, goes up to there, but I think we're just going to use that piece. This blocking, if you don't know what it looks like, is actually uh, one of the metal bars out of a filing cabinet. It's steel, it's hard, and it does not flex. All right, so that side is done. And next, we have to block up until here, but we're gonna block all the way down, so it might be a good idea. Let's see how high that goes. It goes right to there. Ah, so I see that's perfect. So I'm gonna line this up like so, just like that. And smash it against it and hold it in place. There we go, and this is gonna sit right there. This is also gonna be clawed, and since it's right there, there's a little bit of an overhang, so it's gonna be a good idea to get a piece of material under it, because you never want it to fall and then be crooked, and that right there is perfect. There we go. And one this way. Added benefit of extending this all the way down is if you have your foamy without that there, only a quarter of the, the clip is going to stick onto uh, the holster. And the more that it sticks on the holster, the better retention it will have on your belt. So that is pretty much done right there. All I got to do is trace with our handy uh, deep reach tracing marker on some uh, quarter inch MDF found at my local Home Depot or Lowe's. You can get anywhere. And then uh, we're going to go ahead and press it. So again, this is going to be this carbon fiber. Always make sure you peel this because uh, you'll be in a world of hurt if you don't. And I'm going to go ahead and let this preheat inside the oven. little thing. Oh, it's a beautiful thing. All right. Now all I got to do is Stick it in place.
go. Ready to press. Good to go. And this is what I mean by preheating. All my foam is in this one, and that's pretty squishy. And over here, that's pretty warm. So we're gonna go ahead and do the Teflon, get it down, and in the press we go. Holsters in the press, everything is all set. I am actually gonna take a trip to the local post office, seven minutes down the road, and then by the time I get back, this will be done in the press, and then we can continue building. But I wanted to take this time to show you a new product. Now, I did not come up with it. I've seen it before, and I'm like, oh, cool. I want to build those. So I started building them, so I can't take the credit. Although this particular design, I'm not sure who else does it. And tomorrow, I'm actually going to have an x-ray picture of it so you can see what it looks like on the x-ray. But I started making these. So if you look at it, it looks like a normal Sharpie on the outside. But on the inside, we'll take the cap off, and they are sharpened carbon fiber rods. And as you can see, that's going to do some damage. And uh, yeah, so I, these are now live on my website. Brand new product. Like I said, um, the way I build these, they will not come apart. And I'm going to do a video like stabbing some meat and some other stuff with this and show you just how strong these carbon fiber rods are. So I have uh, quite a few of them on hand right now. I did a batch of them and uh, I'm going to be making quite a bit more in the future. So if you want to get your hands on one, just visit foultacunlimitedllc.com or foultac.com. And uh, yeah, these are undetectable in the x-ray and in um, metal detectors. And I'm going to prove the x-ray one uh, because I'm going to go have one of these x-rayed tomorrow. So stay tuned for that because I'm going to show what the results are when I do it. So if you need one, go grab it. Hides in plain sight. Don't you just love when everything comes together? All right, fresh out of the press. There is that. It looks killer. I mean, again, that's all, all foam. So it looks absolutely beautiful. We should have some fun. Let's cut it apart and get it apart. Pretty simple, you know the process. We're gonna go ahead, <clears throat> trace it out. And this is Claude as well. Good idea to remember that. Because I've done it in the past where I drilled all the holes and then, oh, hey, it's clawed. And then you have to either remake it or modify it to work. And that's just a pain in the butt. Uh, so let me go get a claw. And when I do the claws, I like to put the foamy where it's going to be. And with that... Claw is going to sit right there. So I'll tighten that down. One, two. And let's do a third. All right. Drill and, uh, and cut. We got the rough shape. I obviously cut it on the bandsaw, and I'm just going to do a test fit to see if we have adequate room. We could shave it down just a little bit. Our knuckle kind of slightly grabs it, but for the most part, um, you know, I'll be able to knock that out with the bandsaw. So I'm gonna go ahead, clean that up, fix all the angles on this, and then all we have to do is assemble it. And we are clean-ish, and we're gonna grab our Noga. This is a RC2000, I got it right on Amazon. Thanks to a Beautiful subscriber who told me about this tool because before I used to just reach a long skinny blade in there And that gets old all, right, get all the pencil marks off and I'm gonna go grab All that we need it's a uh, one and a half foamy so we're All 
right. And you can start off with whatever you want. Our hood is gonna, our hood, our uh, claw is gonna go on the top two. There we go. There's one. There's two. Flatheads here. And just a quick tighten. And obviously we'll check the retention. And then the last step is we just gotta laser it. Or at least the foamy, because laser doesn't really show up on this. And here we are, the Ruger American 940 AIWB and FD carbon fiber, 1.5 inch foamy, and just quad. And another order done, another order shipped, and obviously I'm going to continue doing that. So I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your, rest of your week. You're going to see me tomorrow, and have fun. See you later. Love you. Bye. But first, thank you for HolsterSmith and KnifeKits.com, and for all you guys for the support. I will catch you on the next one.